Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, earlier today, I met with Coach Arnett and let him know he was relieved of his duties as head football coach at Mississippi State. I want to start by thanking Coach Arnett for his contributions, both as a, as a defensive coordinator and as a head coach after taking over um, after the tragic passing of Coach Leach. Zach is a great man of integrity, and we wish him and his family all the very best in future endeavors. As the responsible leader of our athletics department, I constantly look at ways that we can get better. Part of that is looking at the health of our programs. And when necessary, it's my responsibility to correct areas where we are falling short. It has become clear that we need a shift in leadership, so therefore we must act. Shortly after meeting with Coach Arnett, I met with senior analyst Greg Knotts and asked him to serve as our interim head coach for the remainder of this season. Coach Knox is a true professional and instantly accepted the role. Coach Knox has experience in this role both here at Mississippi State and also at Florida. After meeting with Coach Knox, I met with the rest of the coaching staff and shared with them our plan and confirmed with each of them their professional obligations and duties to continue to pour into our young men. All of our existing assistant coaches will remain in their roles for the duration of the season and have been asked to give their all to Mississippi State and align with Coach Knox. Our football student athletes were called to a team meeting after I met with the coaches this morning. We will meet again this, this afternoon. I can tell you this, we have a locker room full of young men who are eager to grow, and I know Coach Knox, with his leadership, will inject confidence, connection, and belief within our program. All the decisions that we make are always centered on the best interest of our student athletes. Winning football programs are built on toughness, Consistency, togetherness, belief, connection, passion, and resiliency. We have shown throughout our history all of these ingredients can be found right here in Starkville, Mississippi. Since I arrived here in January, I've felt the overwhelming support from our fans, ticket holders, letter winners, Bulldog Club members. I know all of our stakeholders will meet us in this moment and help us propel Mississippi State football to where we all want it to be, to where we all know it can be. We're going to need our stakeholders to join us in this pursuit. It will be vital to our success and to the future. The road isn't easy, and it will only continue to get tougher. So we need all of, all of us to come together. The greatness that Mississippi State is is the strength of our Bulldogs when we collectively come together. There's no better time to be a Mississippi State Bulldog. We have assembled one of the most dynamic administrative leadership teams in the country that are relentlessly identifying new ways to help our student athletes be successful in the classroom, in competition, supporting their mental health, their well-being, their NIL opportunities, and the list continues to go on and on and on. As we look forward, we know the best days are ahead for Mississippi State. We have begun a national search for our next head football coach. We have a storied history. We've got a proven pathway to the NFL. We're located in a great recruiting area, and we're competing against the best week in and week out. As a competitor, there's no better place to be than Mississippi State University. Uh, lastly, our football team will work tirelessly to get prepared to play this Saturday against Southern Miss. And I want to ask all of our bulldog, Bulldogs excuse me, to show up and support our young men and our coaches. That's who we are. We want people to continue to show up, uh, make our stadium continue to be one of the most dynamic environments in all of college football. But we need each of you to be there. Bulldogs are about action. We're not about complaining. We're just about showing up and doing the work. Like all high-profile co coaching searches, there's going to be plenty of rumors out there on who our candidates are. And there'll be a ton of interest in this position. I advise you not to make assumptions or believe anything unless you hear it from me. During this process, we'll be thorough, we'll be diligent, and we'll be efficient. The next time I speak publicly on this will be when we introduce our, our next head football coach. With that, Brendan, take a couple questions. Zach, if you will, maybe take us through your decision timeline. I mean, you know, what kind of brought this day forward? And obviously, we've all seen your product on the field, but kind of what you know and when did you know it and when did you start thinking that way? Yeah, I think 
in this role, you're constantly looking at the health of a sport program. And you throughout the season, you want to see progression. And progression in certain areas, I don't think we, we were met the standard on the field. Um, as far as a point of decision, I think after discussion with Dr. Keenum in, on Sunday afternoon, it was, it was pretty clear that this was a decision that we needed to make to make sure that we solidify um, our path forward into the future. Coach, will you be using the services of a search firm in this? And um, you talked about the parameters when we spoke in a College Station the other night, that it will be kind of a, a, as fast as you can. Do you have a timeline in mind when you want to have a head coach? Yeah, r right now we, we do plan to use uh, the services of a search. Um, from a timeline perspective, clearly we want to be as, as fast and expeditious as we can, but we also want to make sure we're thorough and diligent, understanding there'll be a lot, there's a lot of football left to play in this season. Uh, we don't want to mix, you know, just jumping out there to doing it if it's not the right fit, not the right person for Mississippi State. So we'll be, uh, again, as thorough as, as we need to be, but we also understand what's upcoming. We understand what happens with the transfer portal. We understand uh, the recruiting calendar. We understand the final schedules. So with all of that, there's a lot of variables that we'll take into consideration, but at the core of what we'll do is make sure that we hire the best person for Mississippi State. Zach, you mentioned you know the football still left to play this season. I guess what, why did you think now was was the right time to make a change and uh, with two games still left to play? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of games, a lot of stuff to play for. Um, and thought we need, at this point of the season we needed a, just a, a jolt of energy, a jolt of juice, and it's, it's also uh, comforting when you know you have somebody like Coach Knox that um, has the experience before. You know, you talk about somebody that's a connector, somebody that builds people up, somebody that's again. Uh, got over three decades of experience coaching a game of football, um, so thought this was best. And, and also, uh, we, we've got a, a lot of recruiting. We've got a lot of things we've got to do, and I know Coach Knox will really help us get that done. Hey, Zach. Um, you, you were talking about how you don't want to rush this. You want to get the right person in there. What are the qualifications for you for this next hire? Does it have to be someone who has head coaching experience? Uh, is that kind of all off the table? Like, what are you specifically kind of looking for, and what, what's highest on your on your qualifications list for this opening? Yeah, I think you know you always go into a search open-minded. So I don't want to say it's got to be you know an offensive person or a defensive person has to be a sitting head coach. I think uh, what you do look for is you look for winning quality, somebody that's got winning traits, somebody that knows what winning looks like at the highest level, both schematically and programmatically. Um, you know when you've got winning DNA. So don't want to pigeonhole where we're at, but you clearly want somebody that can build culture, and culture changes in, in today's landscape. You want somebody that, from a schematic standpoint, knows the game. And you're competing in this league, you're competing against the, uh, the tip of the spear, and that excites me. That excites everybody, I think, to have that. Um, so nobody, somebody that knows the game, uh, somebody clearly that can recruit, you know, and recruiting in such a, a changing landscape. So somebody that has that dimension, and then clearly somebody that understands how to develop talent. You know, for us, when we recruit young men, uh, one, we recruit them for life, but we also recruit them knowing that we have a clear pathway to the National Football League, and we don't shy away from that. Um, so we want to have somebody that has all those, all those principles, all those ingredients to come in here and lead our program. Hey, Zach, with this being your first hire of this magnitude in college football, I mean, how prepared do you feel like you are for this, uh, to take this on? Yeah, Robbie, my, my dad had a construction company growing up, and he'd always look at my hands and say, you know, are they still soft or are they, are they got scars on them? So I think over my tenure in this business, uh, if you look at my hands, they're pretty scarred up. Um, and that's a testament to people I used to work for, work with, so have uh, experience at, at every level um, and in every position, every sport. So feel really prepared and understand that we've done this at, you know, two prior institutions I've been at. Zach, in the NIL space, there's a lot of discussion among you know coaching candidates about you know what what your NIL package look like and things like that, and that's a factor in this uh, ever a changing college football world. And so, how prepared are you to answer that question? And uh, you know what do you need from fans to ensure that Mississippi State is competitive in that space so they can attract the best candidate possible? Yeah, over the last uh, handful of months that we've been here, uh, that's been a key priority for us, and we put a lot of um, energy and thought into the Bulldog initiative or working with Charlie Winfield and his efforts. Um, I think for our, our fans, we need everybody to join the Bulldog initiative. We need to support. That will be a subject of conversation. And I feel uh, we've made a lot of progress there. 
Um, but we continue to need people to join, continue to have people support. Again, you can't win games just by yourself anymore. That's not the case. So we've got a competitive fan base. We've got a hungry fan base. So I encourage each of us, uh, each of our stakeholders, to join in what we're trying to do here. Because, again, truly, it's a special time to be a Mississippi State Bulldog. Zach, I know probably when you, when you had to uh, approach Coach Arnett with the news, it was a difficult conversation. But just can you share anything about the reaction or anything that was said? Yeah, I want to keep our conversation private. But from the moment I stepped on campus, I can say Coach Arnett's been nothing but a true professional. He's a great um, leader. He's a great man of integrity. And nothing is out of characteristic of Coach Arnett. You know, Coach Arnett's got a huge, bright future ahead of him. Again, wish him nothing but the best. You mentioned uh, meeting with the players th this morning, later this afternoon. I guess just what's kind of the, the message you have for them and, and how do you kind of expect them to respond, you know, these last two games uh, to the news? Yeah, I think first and foremost, always go at it with their young men. And I understand change is hard. I've been a part of a lot of locker rooms before over my lifetime. And anytime there's, there's sudden change, it's difficult. And that factored in there's been uh, sudden change compounded from Coach Leach's passing. So today, I want to make sure it's all about how much we care and love each other. And when we say that, we mean it. And I think that's something special about Mississippi State. So how can we help you get through this time? And secondly, it's, OK, as we go through that, now we got to get ready to start playing some football games. And there's no greater medium to, uh, to bond together, to come together and pursue something really good than the game of football. I think sport is something that's unlike anything else. So I think the message is, you know, you never play the game for yourself. If you play the game for yourself, you're, you're never going to find happiness. You're never going to find joy playing. But you play for the person lining up next to you. And I think we've got a group of, of men in our locker room that will line up and play for the person next to them. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, is there anything you can tell your recruits or potential recruits right now? Yeah, I think, again, there's not a better time to be a Mississippi State Bulldog. You know, it's something I've been so uh, presently surprised since we've been here. We've got the resources. We've got the facilities. We've got the coaching staff to get you to the next level. Um, so it asks for trust for, for our recruits. Uh, and I'm happy to do, all, do, my mar excuse me, to do my part in the messaging of that. But, again, I've been around the game of football my entire life and understand, uh, again, what – what great coaching looks like and what great coaching is. And I'm 100% confident we'll find that right coach to not only get our current players, uh, develop them to another level, but also um, the recruits to make sure we take them to another level as well. So I think, again, for the recruits, it's no better time than be a Mississippi State Bulldog. Zach, does your experience as a college football player play into your decision here? Do, do you have traits and coaches that you uh, played for that you're going to be looking for and to come to Mississippi State? Yeah, probably don't pull from my playing experience necessarily. I think you do pull from, like, again, winning qualities, winning DNA. And I think winning translates. Like so many times we put, uh, you know, whether it's cliche or characteristics on what specifically is that, you know, they've got great turnover margin, they got great time of possession, whatever that might be. I think you can see what winning looks like, and winning does translate. So, you know, I. I played for a winning coach at, at Wake Forest. And so I do see, like, winning looks differently. There's different strategies to win depending on where you're at. So, I, But I think at the core of it, it's winning. And how can you d develop talent? And how can you continue to lead men forward? Because um, it's not all about football. Yeah, we want to win games. But there's also more to this game. This is we're uh, nestled in the heart of campus for a reason. It's higher education. It's like, how do you grow? How do you be you know, a better man? And I think uh, all, those, all those factors carry into, again, how can you win as a program? John? Zach, uh, you kind of talked about the timeline a, a little bit earlier. But in, in terms of you know, finding that, that right person, like, do you have like, a certain amount of candidates now and then kind of narrow it down over the next couple? Like, what, is that, what do the next couple of weeks kind of look like for you in terms of candidates that you have in your mind and, and when it comes to meeting with them and that? Is there any kind of insight you can share with us on that process? Yeah. Probably don't want to get into number of candidates. Just say this: I've been a again a student of this game for a long time. Uh, I've got a, a deep network in, in not only college football, uh, football at every level, um, and I think that's just a, a blessing to grow up in, you know, in a football family. So I don't want to get time on, but I've got I've, again 
over my career, uh, growing up, being so heavily involved in the game, got a list of candidates and, you know, uh, look forward to having conversations when those time comes and then make sure we'll will it down from there. And, and then, um, you know, clearly I also want to give a, a big testament or shout out to Dr. Keenum has been huge in this process as well. And we'll make sure that we get aligned with uh, our campus leadership as well. All right, thank you guys. Hail State. Thanks, Coach. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. There's some familiar faces out there, and I guess up here, huh? Uh, it's been a uh, a Monday morning. It's been a Monday morning. I uh, want to first say thank you to uh, Dr. Keenum, our athletic director, Mr. Selman, uh, for giving me this opportunity again. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Coach Arnett, who gave me an opportunity to come back to what me and my family has always called our second home. Uh, excited to be here, excited for this opportunity. One thing in my life that I've been privileged to do is uh, make an impact on young men. And so uh, that's what we're going to do here in the next 10 days. We have two games coming up in 10 days. And uh, we're going to try to win the state title. Coach, uh, obviously it's not your first rodeo uh, in here uh, being an interim head coach. Just talk about the approach this time, and it, would, would it be anything similar to the last? Well, uh, it's very similar in the fact that uh, I'm going to be me. I can't be anyone else, so I have to be the person I am. Uh, energy, effort, attitude, uh, demanding the attention to details, you know, those are the things that I'm going to continue to do and continue to be me. Uh, I, like I said before, the last time I was here, uh, I'm not Dan. I can't be Dan Mullen. I can't be Zach Arnett. You know, I'm going to be me. You know, and so that's the the statement I got to try to get across to the kids. The same guy they've been seeing every day, they're going to continue to see him. I'm sure the process has probably already started, but just kind of take us through getting up with recruits and, and guys left on the on the board for you guys, and, and what kind of the message is to those committed and those you're still recruiting? Well, we're talking to, we called every recruit, uh, or we're going to be calling every recruit that's on our board and uh, that's committed to us. And just in uh, reaffirming, you know, their commitment to just hold tight and uh, just let the process play out. Uh, Zach, someone was just talking about kind of you know, making this move because he felt the, the team needed a bit of a jolt of energy, I guess. How do you guys as a staff, you know, kind of try to implement that you know, after losing the last few games to try to get that energy back for this last two? Well, for me, uh, as uh, the interim head coach, I talked to the staff this morning. And, again, we're going to go out and, and be who we are, you know. And, and I want the coaches to understand that. Just go out and be yourself. Don't try to be anyone different. You know, go out and do the things that's going to help us succeed and be a professional about your job. Coach, uh, you've had some success as an interim coach. Uh, w what's the key? You know, what's the message initially you know, to the players to keep them bought in and not just kind of playing out the string? I think is again, you look at our senior class. Uh, we want to make sure that those guys who dedicated themselves to this program leave the right way. And so they're not playing uh, – just for themselves. They're playing for this entire team and this program. It's not the name on, on the back of the shirt. It's also the name on the front of the shirt. So uh, I, I think that's what we all have to understand and, and go out and just do our best every day. Given the, uh, I guess, uncertainty over the next couple of weeks, even with the, the coaching staff, what are you guys doing in terms of, of roster retention with, with the portal and, and talking to the guys who, in those types of conversations? Well, the recruiting office is working on that. We'll continue to have conversations with those guys uh, as that time approaches, you know, as we get closer to official visit time when we're bringing kids in. Uh, right now, uh, we're just making communication with and letting them know, you know, the things that are going on here and keeping a wide open channel. The other night, Jet Johnson couldn't know it was coming, but he made a comment after the A&M game, said there's always something to play for when you sit on the field. How can you take that attitude and translate that to the team that there is something to play for here? 
Well, he's right. He's 100% right. There's always something to play for, you know, and, and I think, it's, again, it's that name on the front of the shirt and that name on the back. You know, that name on the back is what you carry the rest of your life. And so people will remember that name. And also the name on the front is what you're attached to. You're attached to, that gives you a platform, the name on the front does. And, and so having that platform, you represent that platform. And so that's, uh, and I think Jed is, is, he hit the nail on the head. There's always something to play for. And, and at 4.15 today or 4.30 when we meet as a team, uh, that's the message I'll definitely get across to him. Obviously, when Coach Arnett was promoted, it was under you know tough circumstances, you know, for the team and the players. What did you think of the way he kind of you know gave the program the stability that they were looking for at that time, and kind of how he got the the players to you know come back and, and play you know this year with with heavy hearts, obviously. I, I think that Zach did a great job. I talked to him this morning. We had a a brief conversation, and we talked about. Uh, I told him how I appreciate the things he did on trying to instill the toughness in this program back into it. Uh, again, I was here for nine years. And to come back and be a part of the program again, I, I saw where he really, really dedicated himself to the toughness of this program. That's how this program was built, on toughness. You know, and uh, he really, really worked at it daily, you know, of, of getting the kids to, you know, practice hard, work hard, play hard. All right, because this is a tough nosed program. Anything else? Last one, second. I want to follow up as well on what you were saying about Jed earlier. I guess just how important are guys like Jed, you know, Buki Watson, the, the veterans who have been around and kind of getting you guys through you know, these next couple of weeks? Those, those guys are very important. You know, they're, uh, they're what we call our leadership council. And I'm going to meet with those guys today. And again, they're the, they're the backbone of this team, you know, and the things they do and the things they say, uh, they, they, they carry big words with them. So uh, Jet, again, he uh, has been a leader ever, ever since I've had a chance to know him and get to know him and watch him and watch how he plays, why, how he carries himself. Uh, that's impressive. And, and that's what I expect to see from every Bulldog. You know, the way you carry yourself, the way you go to work every day, the way you come prepared, the effort and attitude you bring. That's what we expect to see as a staff.